Hi, this is Mrs. Leonardo, and today I'm going to show you how to get information about your grades and assignments while using PowerSchool. Before I get started, I want you to understand that this tutorial assumes you already know how to access PowerSchool using the web-based application. If you don't have a username or password or you've forgotten yours, please come see me during school hours. Parents, you can contact the school office to get your child's access ID. You will need the access ID before you can start creating account and accessing PowerSchool. Let's get started. So once you log on to PowerSchool, this is where you are able to see your attendance for the previous week, the current week, your classes and teachers, and your grades and points for each trimester. Currently, we are in trimester one. You also get to see your absences for the entire school year and your tardies. So let's take a look. If we look at student A's attendance for last week, we can see that student A went home early on Monday, so they missed fourth, fifth, and sixth period. They went home early on Thursday, so they missed fifth and sixth period. And on Friday, they were excused. They went on a school field trip. As a teacher, this is concerning because if I had student A in periods five and six, or even period four, this means that they missed periods five and six for three days that week, and they missed fourth period for two days. So if your schedule or your attendance looks like this, it's very important that you talk to your teachers immediately so you can figure out what you missed and if there's any way you can turn it in. Now let's go back to what you see when you first log on. So let's say you're student B and you're trying to figure out why did I get a 99% in Mrs. Leonardo's class? I'm really, really striving and my goal is to get 100% in every class. What did I miss? So one of the important things for you to understand is that anything in PowerSchool that is blue, it's a hyperlink. You can click on it. So you cannot click on first period or A day or B day. Okay. Notice that they're black. You can't click on those. You can't click on anything over here. You can't click on the names of your classes. You can click on your teacher. Okay? And if there's any information the teacher has uploaded to PowerSchool, then you can get that contact information. But notice, every single teacher right here has left a comment about the grade. So you can actually go in and figure out what's going on. What do I have? Well, what, what's happening here? And okay, so let's check it out. So let's decide to click on Mrs. Leonardo's language arts class. So here's what you see. So let's say, for example, you're student A. Now you can look up here and realize that you had an assignment that was due August 28th. You've got these little yellowish orange squares here. This indicates the assignment was missing. You never turned it in. And this is the grade you got. Notice down here, okay, more little yellow orange squares missing, red triangle means it's late. Okay, oh, and look, my teacher also told me, or my Mrs. Leonard also told me that if there's anything that's blue, I can click on it. This means I can't click on anything here. There's no information about those grades here, but it looks like Mrs. Leonardo got her act together and actually started leaving some comments about grades. But before we get to into this side, let's take a look over here. If you want to figure out what an assignment is, you have no idea what it is, what is that? Again, it's a blue link. Click on it. So you click on it and I really try my best to make sure that every single assignment that I create, that I give you a comment and let you know what that assignment is. So for the Cornell Notes for Reciprocal Teaching, I described it as students took modified Cornell Notes on the subject of reciprocal teaching and the Fab Four reading comprehension strategies. This was a Google Classroom assignment. So now you know, okay, I need to go to Google Classroom to get it. If you do not see Google Classroom, that means it was a paper assignment. And you can get that in the yellow binder in the classroom. All right. Now let's go back to that right side that we were looking at. So right over here. Okay. Let's take a look at that. 
So now you're trying to figure out, oh, I got an F. I have an assignment missing. You've already clicked on this link and you figured out what the context clues and text dependent questions assignment was. But now you have to figure out, OK, why did I get a zero out of 20? I'm pretty sure I turned it in. OK, so click on that. And then anytime I have a student that gets a grade that's a B, a C, basically it's not an A or there's any errors on it whatsoever, I try my best to leave you a comment so that you know what the mistake was or what you need to do. So for student A, I never got this assignment, so I left a comment and it stated, please turn in by Wednesday, September 30th. Okay, another comment, you did not turn in this assignment. The final day to turn this assignment for half credit is Friday, October 9th. If you're trying to figure out, Mrs. Leonardo, I, I did the Great Fire Summary and I got an 18 out of 25. Why did you give me an 18 out of 25? Mrs. Leonardo, I got a 24. Why? So again, click on the grade and I will give you that information. Okay, so for the Great Fire Summary, please see Google Classroom for information about your grade. So anytime you type something on a document, I try my best to leave you comments. I try to let you know what you can improve in some areas of strength as well. So this is very general because any student who did not get a score of 25, I made sure to leave this comment for you. So I also said you most likely got this score because of an incorrect heading, incorrect title, errors in capitalization, punctuation, and or lack of textual evidence. So some people got a lower score because they had every single one of these things and some people got points taken off because they forgot to cite the text or their heading was missing. So you now have to go to Google Classroom and figure out, okay, what comments do I have? What do I need to fix? And I also left a little remind a reminder because one of the things we had with the great summary, one of the problems I had were a lot of students were stating their own opinions. I think this, you should do this. I, 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 I. So when we're writing our summary, or one of our sixth grade standards is you must use textual evidence. And you have to make sure that when you write your summary, it's free from any personal pains or judgments. So if you were someone who, when you wrote your summary and you mentioned I, today I am going to tell you about the great fire. I think the great fire happened. I docked off points because remember, I told you very explicitly, we are not going to use any information about ourselves. We are just going to focus on what the text says. We're going to use textual evidence and we are going to cite our source. That's it. Okay. So again, you can get all of this information in PowerSchool. Remember, anything that's blue, it's a hyperlink. Click on it. If the assignment title is blue, click on it. Learn what the assignment was. If your score is blue, click on it see why you got that score. Also remember, being in school is important. I know things happen. For example, I was absent this week because my sister's getting married, okay? I'll give you a little secret. I'm actually in my hotel room right now recording this, okay? So for me, I would rather be at school because I love teaching and I love my students. However, things come up, okay? So you have to be absent sometimes. Sometimes you have to go home early. Field trips are great. But remember, you're in sixth grade now, okay? And it's your responsibility to make sure you talk to your teachers and get everything that you need, okay? So again, if you need my help, come find me. I am always available to help you, and I am more than happy to assist you. Have a great day.